Connection established. Welcome. Have you ever think about using a Wi-Fi connection over 1 km and above, but didn't know if this is even possible or didn't know how to do that? If the answer is yes, then this is the right video for you. Today I'll show you how I set up Wi-Fi connection over 1.4 km using Mikrotik SXT Lite 5 AC wireless system, or also known as a integrated base station. SXT Lite 5 AC is basically a router with a directional antenna capable to transfer 5 GHz Wi-Fi over a long range distance up to 46 km. Yes, you heard right, 46 km. I will explain that in a moment. I see that SXT Lite 5 AC is now kinda replaced with the SXT SA5 AC, which has slightly changed parameters from SXT Lite 5 AC, but are basically the same thing. I won't go into the details about the differences because you can see them on websites. Check the links. Let's mention that SXT Lite 5 AC is a Mikrotik product from Latvia with headquarters in Riga. Mikrotik offers solid quality products for approachable prices. I would say that with Mikrotik you get what you pay for. If you're interested and want to find more information about Mikrotik products, which are really cool, check their website. The link is in the description. If looking point to point selection guide, we can see that SXT SA5 AC goes up to 46 km. PTP selection guide claims that from 41 to 46 km, SXT SA5 AC provides a 6 megabit per second link. On a range from 5 to 41 km, we get MCS0 modulation and coding scheme. Modulation and coding schemes can be found in the table on Wikipedia. Find the link in the description. At that distance, SXT SA5 AC maximum speed is somewhere around 30 megabits per second. If I saw the right channel frequency of, of SXT SF5 AC, which should be 80 MHz. From 3 to 5 km speed goes up to 54 megabits per second. From 0 to 3 km we have MC S7 scheme, which provides around 300 megabits per second. But the Mikrotik web website claim that maximum speed over 5 GHz for this SXT goes up to 867 megabits per second. Maybe I was looking at the wrong table row, who knows. But wait, before even buying and setting up those base stations, we need to take some planning. With this, we will check if we even have the conditions to set up point-to-point -point link. The first obstacle can be your country's regulations considering the frequency of usage over the long range. Basically, the main problem with this is that there is a lot of weather stations around the world that can work on the same frequency as the one you want to occupy or some other devices that already use the same frequency. This can cause inter interferences and cause unavailability of services. Shortly said, a lot of mess. In this case, devices like weather stations have priority, and this will mean that you are making a violation. If you are making this violation, telecommunication regulators in your country can identify the source of it easily by tracing the source of your SSID or by the report of a weather radar. Are you asking yourself, how is that possible? Check the article I've added in the description, so I won't extend this the video too much. But basically, the weather radar can find the signal line of your antenna visually, as you can see on this picture. So, to prevent this, check the regulations in your country and make sure you won't cause any problems like that by using the right frequency. Next thing if you want to set up a point-to-point -point link is of course to check the air distance between the two points where you want to set up the base stations or let's say antennas. That's just one of the steps, but that way you can choose the right solution for you. If you don't want to use Mikrotik, you can check some Ubiquiti or similar products. I don't know any other than those two players from for solutions like we are setting up here. 
I will be glad if you give me some feedback in the comments and inform me about the things I'm missing. Another important step or let's say condition to set up a point to point link is to check the line of sight between two antennas. Line of sight is a clear error line between two points which enables connection between two antennas. If there is some obstacle in the middle of two antennas in their line of sight, the connection won't be available. To check line of sight, I'm using Scatacore RF line of sight website tool. Link is in description. This will help you see if you have conditions to set up point to point link. If the line is red and you see the elevations like hills or mountains between antennas, you probably won't be able to set up the point to point link. A green link means that you have a clear line of sight and the connection can be established. Now that we confirm that we fulfill the conditions, let's continue with the setup. I will use two same Mikrotik SXT Lite 5 AC base stations that I bought some time ago for 60 US dollars for a piece. Alongside the base stations, I've bought an outdoor CAT 5E cable to provide the LAN connection to one station and provide the connection from the other one. Because I'm planning to create a new LAN on the other side of the transmitted Wi-Fi signal, I will also use a router. And on the end, I can do nothing without the basic networking tools. Link where to get all this will be in the description. Let's take one Mikrotik station and connect it with the computer over a UTP cable to start with the configuration. What we want to do is this. One of the stations will be connected to the ISP router or modem in my case. This will be the bridge station that will provide access to the global network over the modem as a gateway. Another station will be 1.4 km away and connected to the router which will create a new local network and provide access to the internet for my devices. So for the first configuration we will configure the bridge station on the ISP modem side. Download and install Winbox app from Mikrotik website. You can find the link in the description. Let's open Winbox. We should be able to see the device and its information. Let's access it by clicking on the MAC address twice. Username is admin and leave password field empty. Okay, now we can see the interface of the bridge station. Let's change the identity from Mikrotik to bridge. Let's go to system, identity and set it as a bridge. Now let's set the DHCP client to Ether1 so it gets the automatic IP address and press apply. This can be set also as a static one, but let's go with this approach. Now we can see that the Ether1 received the IP address. Let's test, test the internet connection by pinging google.com in the terminal. And it's working. Ok, now we will set the bridge that connects the ether we just set up to the VLAN that will provide connection with the other Mikrotik station. Open Bridge tab and press plus button to add new interface. Let's call it Bridge 1 and press apply. Now go to the ports tab. Make sure ether1 is selected and press apply. After that press on plus to add one more interface and change this one from Ether1 to VLAN2 and press apply. Great! Now we have a bridge between Ether and VLAN. We picked VLAN2 because VLAN1 is the local Mikrotik VLAN with small range and not the one for point to point link. I will set also the IPNet masquerade which will translate multiple IP addresses to single one and it's good because this way external hosts cannot initiate traffic into our network which is an additional protection. Let's go to IP, firewall and select net tab. In general tab we will select bridge 1 and press apply and then go to action tab. 
Here select Masquerade and press OK. It's time to configure VLAN interface. Go to Wireless tab, select VLAN 2 and enable it by pressing the check mark button. Let's select security profile and add a new one by pressing plus button. Enter the VPA and VPA2 pre-shared key. Then press apply and OK. To set the VLAN settings, let's go to the wireless and double click the VLAN2. Interface VLAN2 will open. Here, let's select the mode to the bridge and set SSID to some name you want. As a wireless protocol, I will select 802.11 and security profile to profile 1, for which we set the password earlier. We can also set the band to use 5 GHz BGNAC. And last, we will set static, static IP to the VLAN interface. Go to IP tab and select addresses. Press the plus button to add new one. I will set it as the 10.10.10.1/24 and assign it to the VLAN 2 interface. Then press apply and OK. For the end, let's test the connection in the terminal by pinging the Google again. And it's working. That's it for the bridge station. For the station bridge station, on the other side, we will do the similar. Let's plug the other station to the PC with UTP cable, as with the previous one, to configure it. In Winbox, first let's set the identity to Station Bridge. Then go to Wireless tab and enable VLAN 2. In Security Profiles, add new profile and set VPA and VPA2 keys, same as we did before for Bridge Station. Navigate to the Interfaces tab and open VLAN 2 by double-clicking. Set the same options in the Wireless tab as we did for the Bridge Station and press Apply. Next, let's assign IP for VLAN 2. Go to IP tab and open Addresses. Add a new address and type 10.10.10.2/24 and select VLAN 2. Now we will set the DNS server to resolve conversion between IPs and domain names. I will set this one to the local IP of the modem that's connected to the ISP. In my case, it's 192.168.1.1 and we'll add the Google DNS 8.8.8.8 .8 and also mark the checkbox to allow remote requests. Because we have a static APs for subnet 10.10.10.0/24, we will add a route rule. Go to IP tab, select routes, and add new one by pressing the plus button. Let's add gateway IP to the IP of the bridge station IP. That's 10.10.10.1 and press apply. We still need to add the interfaces in the bridge. So go to the bridge tab and add new interface bridge1. Then go to port and add ether1 and vlan2. If we try to ping google.com from the terminal, it works. But to have access on the neighbor device that connects the ether1 interface to the station bridge station, we need to set the static IP and DNS settings. In my case, I have additional router connected to the Ether1 of the station bridge station. In the router configuration, we need to set the IP to the one from modem IP pool or the Mikrotik VLAN2 IP pool. I set it to the modem one by adding the next IP. 192.168.1.3/24 The default gateway is the modem IP. It's 129.168.1.1. Primary DNS is the same as modem IP and alternate 
DNS server is set to the 8.8.8.8. If we test it, we can see that it's working. Great, we successfully set the point-to-point -point Wi-Fi connection. Okay, on the end, I've tested the down and up speeds and I can confirm they're pretty much the same as the modern ones. I've been using this Migratic point-to-point Wi-Fi over four years now and can confirm that it almost works perfectly. Things I noticed are that in the case of bad weather, connection is slightly disturbed, which is logical since it's, it affects every Wi-Fi signal. Another interesting thing that causes a little trouble is the wind. In case of strong wind, the station starts to swing a little bit left and right, and that affects the connection also. Other than that, stations are working great, and in case of power loss, which happened a few times, they are back up and running in a no time. And that's it. I hope you learned something new and found useful information in this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. Good luck.